Good morning, Len. Thanks for joining us. This is our final segment with Clint Kelly. I'm Nick Barris. We are on Facebook Live. Also, uh, here on the Plus, if you want to join, we'll get some calls here in a moment. Talking the Redonda Vought conviction. And so, as we went to break, I want to give you a chance to answer. This one fella makes the point. All right. How is what Redonda Vought, you can say she was overworked, tired, the way nurses sometimes are, and that's a legit complaint. But you say, well, because of that, maybe she shouldn't face criminal prosecution. If there's a truck driver who's very tired, has been on a long thing, runs a red light, kills someone, says, well, yeah, but I, I was running for 12, 14 hours, and you know, you know he will be prosecuted. You know, when I try these cases and there's a nurse involved, my theory is that the nurse ran a nursing red light okay. or a nursing stop sign. All right. Kevin's point is, why should a nurse be treated any differently for running a nursing red light than a trucker who runs a I mean, truck. Do, should they have special protections because of That's what they do? That's what Kevin's point is, is do we as a society want to give nurses and health care providers special protection above and beyond what the rest of us have to follow as rules in life? And it's it's a public policy question for the legislature. Oh, that's... They're the ones that confer rights and take them away. Yep. Let's go next to Jane. Uh, Jane, good morning. Hi, Jane. Hi, this is uh, Jane, and I have one comment okay. and a couple questions. The first one was a comment to the lady who said maybe limiting the hours. And um, I understand exactly where she's coming from as far as being overworked. Limiting hours might have resolved some of her, you know, being tired. But today's life, I mean, they can still go to two different campuses and end up working back-to-back -back shifts. So even limiting it at the corporate level doesn't limit it at like the provisional level. And then my second part is what I heard you say is the nurse said she was overworked and she was understaffed, which is why she created those mistakes. But what I hear you say is the nurse was unrepresented because she didn't have anyone to help with that accountability. She was unrepresented. The hospital holds accountability the healthcare industry holds accountability whether you're in the government whether in the private sector it's not only the provisional person it's not only that employee so who else helps with accountability you have the employee you have that nurse that truck driver that whoever but you don't have the accountability on that corporate or on that government side so we need that representation and on the second part of that, if we are going to say that the employee needs to have criminal prosecution when they make mistakes at work, then when is the DA and how many have they sent to, to jail wrongfully or prosecuted and they've caused their life to be ruined? And when are we gonna give them that criminal prosecution? How are we gonna look into their ethics? and hold them accountable. Okay, Clint? Well, I can't answer Jane's last question yeah. because I think she's saying that uh, the district attorney should be punished somehow from bringing this prosecution. No, that's ridiculous. Uh, as for the accountability, I think that is a good point. Where is the corporate accountability and how do we go about getting it? And that's something that I would like the legislature to take a look at on behalf of my clients as well as on behalf of the staff. And I also believe that the the hospital as a corporate unit needs to provide legal counsel for their staff, sure. whether it's civil or criminal. I agree. But I tell you, Jane, I don't think this is going to be a pattern. I think it's quite the opposite. Yeah. I think the effect of this verdict is going to have a chilling impact on any district attorney who wants to bring a claim like this, because this is not good politically. All right, and that's what's interesting that you say, and I think you're dead right. Uh, some people are saying, well, does anyone noticing, you know, an election year is coming up, Glenn Funk, like a lot of DAs, is up for re-election. It is what it is. Anyone who thinks he brought this case back in 2017 for political reasons is dead wrong. That is not why. And if he did, he's a nut because look at the fallout, okay? Um, that's not the case. Uh, Glenn Funk has made the case, if you just look at his track record, right or wrong, he makes a decision which you have to respect and goes that way. You may not like the decision, but he chose to prosecute this nurse. He chose to prosecute Andrew Delkey, a Metro police officer, okay, who is now doing time for a shooting that was very controversial, all right? Um, he went after and was going to prosecute um, a sitting mayor here. In, so 
That's what Glenn Funk does. He decides in his mind what he thinks under the law is right or wrong, and he goes that way. But anyone who's talking about, well, this is political, you're wrong. It's not political. And, Nick, let's remember, there was a jury verdict. Yes. We have to respect well, the jury system. They could have acquitted her. Right. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of people blame Glenn, and you can make the point, maybe, is there a difference here? Once he brought the charges and it went to a jury, they were required to look at the circumstances under the law, and maybe under the law this reached the level of criminally negligent homicide. But there's wiggle room there, and had he not sought it, it never would have gotten to that point. I guess that's obvious. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't speak to what occurred before the trial, but let's remember, the burden of proof was beyond a reasonable doubt. That is an extremely high burden. And I told you, Nick, I didn't think she would get convicted. Right, you did. And so I, I was, you know, but again, I didn't hear all the evidence presented to the jury, but let's all remember we need to respect jury verdicts here because the next time it could be us in front of a jury, and we trust juries to make decisions uh, they can be life or death decisions or decisions like this. And if we stop respecting jury verdicts, then we're just going to have, you know, uh, people taking guns out in the streets and settling justice that way. And we, we don't want to do that. We, this is our constitutional right and our obligation to let juries decide these questions. Yeah. So moving forward from this point, I guess we've touched on it. I see a lot of the comments here just, again, about, um, you know, again, people still saying, no, 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 Nick, uh, yeah, this is political. Explain, explain to them why this would be insane to think this is a political move by Glenn Funk. Well, I, I'm not a politician, <laughs> on, but I, I don't, just as, a, as an observer and a voter, <laughs> I don't see the upside. Right. Do you? No. I mean, this was a decision that looked like it had nothing but downside to it, no matter what the jury was going to decide. I, I think we have to take what the district attorney, Jackson, said yesterday. They believed in this case. They believed justice right. required, and, and, the, and the jury agreed with them. And that's what Marion says. The more important point is we should focus on asking why the DA decided that this was worth prosecuting. I don't want a district attorney. And was it a good idea? I think a lot of people would say, no, it was not a good idea. Yeah, well, again, but do you want the district attorney doing the popular thing or the right thing? Yeah, he's doing, a, he'll pay the price one way or the other on this if there right. is a price to be paid, but that was his call and he made his choice. And now we see, you know, the reaction to it. But the bigger picture here is what it means to the healthcare community, what it means to nurses, um, who I think many feel that, you know, they're going to be looking over their shoulder. And I think that's wrong. I just don't see any more prosecutions like this. I hope you're right. Based on this. I hope there aren't cases like this. And I hope there aren't more prosecutions. Do you think very unlikely? How rare was this case, in your opinion, in your history of seeing criminal cases involving? The criminal cases I've seen involving people in the healthcare community are the criminal cases involving someone who was charged with intentionally doing something wrong. Right. Redonda Vaught, this was an accident. She did not mean for this to happen. Absolutely. This was a first. I've never seen anything like this. We've heard about the angel of death type of prosecutions where the nurse actually tried to kill someone or was, um, had a plan to go kill people. This was completely different, and I think it's a one-off. I just don't think this is something that's going to spread because of the reaction. Now, things like this do happen. I've seen it happen in hospitals where nurses and other health care providers, not just nurses, it could be phys physician assistants or respiratory therapists, make terrible mistakes, and, and people die from it or wind up in wheelchairs, and they were completely preventable mistakes. Some, I would classify as reckless, but I would never suggest that that health care provider be prosecuted. It's mm -hmm. just not, I believe in the civil justice There's system. a civil system in Absolutely. place for that. I, that. I believe it. I'm a part of it. Now, I hope that what we're trying to accomplish is to settle a social debt where my clients can get compensated, but also where the hospital can buy its piece along mm -hmm. with its staff and change its practice. And you say the best way sometimes to get the hospital's attention is not for some poor nurse to be prosecuted and go to jail, no. but cost them a large settlement. Money hits them in the pocketbook and they're like, if for no other reason, we're going to make sure we address the system failures to make sure this doesn't happen again so we don't get sued the again. The hospitals apologize with their check. Yeah. And that's what gets policies changed and conduct changed and that's where it should end at that point there should be peace at that point and let the health care providers move on that's just my opinion yeah more to this story to come for sure we'll be following along again as uh, i reminded you there is a petition on change.org it's pushing 100,000 signatures after only four days, and uh, that is to ask for clemency for Redon Devot. The only person who can give that in the state of Tennessee would be the governor. There's no indication one way or the other if he'll take notice, but if they get 150,000 signatures, it may be something he takes a look at. Keep in mind, those signatures come from people all across the country, but the governor would have the power to do that, but I think uh, we'll wait and see at sentencing in May, which we'll cover. 
and the range is anything from probation to up to six years. It'll probably be on the low end. Clint, thank you for coming on. Interesting mm -hmm. conversation. Nick, she might get her conviction expunged. Could That's be. a possibility. That's a possibility, yeah. too. Back to wrap things up right after this.